the WMQ and uh, later start with the IBM integration solutions. Uh, basically, what are the uh, uh, what are the items in the IBM integration solutions? Like uh, how to create application service library, static library, a dynamic library, and what are the components of integration bus and uh, what it has? What are the nodes? We can use built-in nodes to different purposes that will cover in the basic steps and uh, there is the mq part i will cover base part with uh, some of the clustering uh, concept knowledge and uh, some uh, remote queue knowledge okay okay then uh, we have a message uh, then in the iib we have to have a it's mostly based on the messages i'll first cover what is the message model and i'll give a brief idea about that and uh, later i'll cover all the some programming steps like esql xslt java compute mapping these are actually we do most of the 90% coding we do in esql esql yes. language yes. yes okay okay then uh, then once the esql is uh, you thorough with the esql i can go for this building message model so web services dfdl just JSON. json is the now latest uh, uh, message formatting they're using because it's a uh, lightweight and uh, easy to um, accept it by most of the then dfdl message format it accepts all the fixed length cobol uh, csd all the formats and so web services it's a uh, okay. uh, web services design okay and uh, in the transformation we have uh, four nodes we have esql we will do mostly. xslt we use very rarely and Java compute, some of the companies uh, prefer Java compute node because uh, they can, those who experience in Java, so they can do the coding in message broker or IIB. Okay. Okay, mapping, mapping node, uh, they, uh, in the IIB integration burst, then they advance some advanced uh, steps. Add they make more advanced like you know involving database uh, we can call from mapping node database call or caching that everything we can do in mapping most of the things they included in mapping now in database okay, okay. So these, are, these are the four uh, transformation steps so that one more is there compute or uh, dot net uh, based on the dot net that i'm not covering okay so then okay uh, then uh, there is a global cache they introduced uh, in the version 58 and now also it's uh, very useful in uh, project having multiple brokers multiple integration nodes and all we can share the data in the cache and mm -hmm. uh, it will be there for until the uh, undeployment of this uh, flows or applications because we can share the it's a shared cache whenever suppose the suppose uh, i'll give one example like we have a static data in a table like uh, this is not changing dynamic it's not dynamic table database table so we can put that cache make it a uh, put it in a global cache it's a uh, very easy to access and uh, response time will be very high like, uh, when each call to database it is a uh, very time consuming and it's very costly okay so now we'll use global cache most of the and we can in the global cache i'll show you all the primitive we can primitive data types also we can insert in the global cache also even the objects even the suppose object is employee object it has uh, id his phone number uh, is a his destination role suppose the object the java object we call something uh, that also we can put it into a cache with the okay. end, as a key and value pairs Okay, we, with the whenever we got a key, we can access the global, global cache and get the item. It's corresponding okay. value. Okay. So the, the global cache and uh, there is a routing patterns. Uh, we have several routing patterns here. Uh, most uh, uh, used the publish subscribe patterns. It's most of the times we use uh, publish subscribe. It should be very thorough with the, the concept and uh, the implementation of them. And uh, in the collector pattern, uh, this also one of the uh, this is the available for collector pattern and also aggregate pattern. Okay. Suppose, in, uh, suppose uh, aggregate pattern like uh, we have to pan in and pan out, we have to pan in, suppose it's best to split it and uh, send it to sub multiple uh, 
systems and uh, once the multiple systems response back that can be response back in uh, different times the response can come in different time so that will uh, aggregate and uh, send it to the suppose example when you are reserving any airline ticket it will ask for hotel room or flight ticket plus hotel room plus any other uh, services it last it will divert all the it will when you have aggregate node it will aggregate uh, send it to flight reservation and one one request to hotel booking site and one book one more service all the response comes back it everything is visible it will send a response to the client who have requested customer then he will book the flight and with the hotel room we we'll use uh, in that scenarios aggregation and uh, here in the rest implementation it's uh, like json you are using here rest almost representation state transfer this is uh, most of the projects are uh, now converting to rest if it's possible all the things we have like uh, in a web services we have a digital document like here also we uh, we got a swagger document using swagger we can uh, um, create a rest uh, services it creates all the it creates actually http no http input node http request whatever required it will create using the you have you know, like http calls will be the right put to get post based on that it will create all the uh, uh, all the skeleton like oh, then you can add your own customized code in that so okay uh, are your services implementation like it's uh, soap uh, when we develop uh, soap right we have a synchronous uh, call and a synchronous patterns in the soap development web services development we use soap nodes there we provided a soap request soap um, soap response and soap async request async response for the asynchronous use that we define uh, and implement uh, web services we can have a web service consumer also we can have a web service producer okay so in the next uh, part handling databases like uh, we have to create a uh, there are different uh, types like if mostly we use odbc connections uh, when i have uh, from the long time but they have also we uh, like odbc connection 64 bit uh, for the bit and then other uh, other accepts 32 bit also other older versions when you create ODS, odbc connection then uh, we can connect to database that's configuration detailed configuration and connected to database using uh, database node and compute node and mapping node we can use the, any of these when you are using these nodes we can connect to database and call, call the database tables and get the details and update our message we can transform the message using calling database updates and uh, there is also we'll take that jdbc connection there is a odbc connection there is a, and one more is jdbc connection to db that i'll uh, cover how to connect uh, using that is called java thin client it's a java type port driver we can connect to using jdbc driver and uh, next is file nodes these are the file nodes how to handle files uh, file read file write and uh, mm, how to write it to the remote location how to these uh, things will cover and there is a timer nodes timer node is timer notification and timeout control these nodes will use to control the flow or uh, in the timely manner to uh, run some applications or some jobs we'll use these nodes okay then uh, once you do some project development and all next uh, it comes to the message flow and application there is a message flow if you give a brief idea about applications like uh, application is a major one package like uh, suppose package then under that there is a message flows message sets uh, subflows esql these files will be there application is a main package it contains message for everything then how to there they have from properties like uh, dsn name database connection property and a queue name property you have to give the queue name to process the messages these properties are configured in the message flows and those properties the applications can contain the message flow that a message flow having the subflows uh, internally it has more flows connected to we have to promote the property to main flow to show in the same place and whenever the multiple dsn or database source name is there we can promote it to same place 
then we can update in one place it will print in all the places so we use promoting property for that and also creating a properties file whenever you have properties in the message flow we update in the message flow but whenever it is in the production or in the dev environment we can't redeploy every time message flow we can change we should change the message flow properties and deploy and there is a properties different from dev to production or uat environment so you use a property spell that defines all the properties in dev environment one for one file for dev environment one is for the uat one is for the production all these properties file then they will uh, uh, create a jar file or a bar bar file here like in java they have a jar file here bar file they create that's a package file then apply a override property it will override all the properties defined earlier it will take the whatever needed for the production or we want to deploy in uat use the uat property like that and that use apply bar override uh, commands and also next once you do this we have to deploy that there is a command for a deployment or you can do through the toolkit they have a toolkit is like a, there's a development environment provided by ibm there there only we will do the development and there are the static and live static share libraries that users and how what to use what of shared library they come up with the shared library in iob 10 now apply bar over it whenever there is a properties uh, there are different properties for different environments whenever we deploy deploy to different environments then you use the same property for uat apply that property to the bar file then deploy it to the uat environment production means production bar properties it has a production details production endpoint production server details everything and apply that bar and deploy to production these things we use apply bar over that is some commands also there for the to apply and uh, also after the overriding is done we will deploy to the execution group now it's called in iob10 that is a integration server uh, it's same as in execution group we will deploy in that execution group so these are the things uh, for a deployment once uh, there is a static library and shared library also shared library have more uh, dynamic features we can uh, share it to multiple applications with the same library static is related to same application one application can suppose a static one static library is in one application it no, we can't refer this static library to other applications only shared library can refer it to multiple applications same one we can refer and these are the uh, but and there is a most important thing in the coding is like exception handling logging and error detection the like exception handling will cover all the how the types once exception occurs how to retry in the same to the queue again exception happens it happens for retrying for three times then stop and store it in some uh, backup queue then why you need a backup queue means suppose customer ordered something the transaction failed three times also but uh, uh, we need a track or customer wants to again transaction same transaction then you have to re-trigger the same transaction from the backup location backup is like queue you have to mention the queue store it in the queue and run the same uh, input whatever they are requesting the same we can trigger again to the message flow these things you cover and logging and auditing this is logging uh, whatever the lo file logging and the database law audit auditing mostly we are auditing we do for uh, input what each flow is passing we'll audit that flow where it's failing or passing and the same we are auditing the request time the output time and which is the message flow name everything auditing in the we use database and logging uh, we do you use trace file trace node some file nodes are there or use the log4j that is also uh, ibm provided with the support uh, pack we can install in the toolkit and use that log4j as in uh, java use log4j same thing and uh, there is a error detection mechanism like debugging is already provided by uh, earlier versions also now also we have debugger and also 
uh, trace node is there we can uh, use the trace node to file trace the file uh, use the file to trace all the errors we can define a file and uh, different parameters we can pass to the file when a root or exception leak is the also user trace we can apply user trace is a broker whenever it gives the more detailed error the system trace and user trace we can once you do that uh, enable in execution group it will store it in the uh, particular location then you have to read that and uh, reformat it to xml then we can read it properly what is the error showing so then uh, <clears throat> this then flow monitoring is there for every node even the input node uh, what are the output node every node has a monitoring tab it, we can monitor the events whenever uh, the message enters then it, it, it triggers the event uh, transaction events uh, in uh, a message enter event is triggered and message is going out event triggered or message went to other node that event triggered that we can catch all the events when we enable the events transaction events it will be that em events will be emitted that emit events will be emitted we have to catch that receive that events that re that how it uh, events emitted is is um, there's a particular topic where when you i'll when i explain the public subscribe then you will understand this one we need a public subscribe mechanism for this monitoring when we emit uh, events we have to catch this it will emit in this particular topic that topic we have to subscribe that subscription we have to define then subscription then that queue is received then we will get a event then we can pass to anywhere or we can store it in the database so and then is a record replay mechanism same thing whatever events is emitted flow monitoring that we have to we can catch it and save it in the database and replay the messages again whatever the failed message we can replay it in the queue again so this is uh, all the built-in number we have to use configurable services for record and reply mechanism ibm provided all the three types of uh, configurable services like uh, configurable message source and the data destination and one is a data store we have to create uh, this configurable services and uh, and configure the databases then monitoring you have to have a monitoring activate the monitoring issue monitoring gets activated events is emitted then it goes to using the configurable services it it uh, catches the receives the monitoring events then it stores in the database using the configurable service then uh, in the database uh, we can see using the web admin uh, i'll cover i'll not mention this i'll cover that how to what are the web admin how to how to create a user in the web admin and how to handle all those things there is a statistics also comes in the web admin and uh, it shows all the record and replay uh, whatever recorded in the database it displays in the web admin there is a features provided by in iib uh, then same thing we can there only we can replay the mem messages to the queue this is uh, most uh, or you of this uh, course